Hey guys, Joey here. Just want to take a quick second and thank all our new subscribers and our current subscribers. We are almost at a thousand. I think currently we're at 825 subscribers when I started making this video. So I thank you guys for that. We got about 30 days left to hit our goal of 1,000 subscribers. So we need 175 new subscribers, guys. Remember, it's free to subscribe. The goal of our channel is to save you money. Um, in today's video, I was going to show you guys a Freedom 458 inverter charger that I've uh, recently diagnosed. It needs to be replaced. As you can see here, we had a small electrical fire inside the unit. It put itself out. So this is one of the reasons why we tape up the wire nuts. You know, driving down the road, these uh, connections can come loose and actually create resistance and heat up and melt the wires or start a fire. But um, thankfully, Xantrex Freedom 458s are designed to contain it, and you don't, you know, they don't typically burn down your motorhome. Uh, I love Xantrex products. I think they make a great product. So don't get me wrong here. Over here to the left, we have the brand new one, just to show you guys that we will be replacing it with the Xantrex Freedom 458. The model number on this particular unit is a 81-2010-12. Data manufacturer of it was 2005. The data manufacturer of the new one, December 22nd, 2017. Same model number, it's a 2000 watt inverter. We had the cover off on the old one. We were inspecting it more, we went a little more in depth into it. We were trying to figure out what exactly caused it. So, as you can see, kind of cool looking inside. You know, it's not all burned up on the inside, but the actual charging system of it still worked. Um, the only thing that has failed on it is it no longer inverts power. So, due to the age of it, it was more cost effective to go ahead and replace it. So, if you guys are looking to uh, replace your inverter charger and you're looking to save some money on the unit itself, I'll post a link below where you guys can save some money on it and um, then you can hire a qualified technician to go ahead and get it changed. Um, I met a guy recently, he was an electrical engineer. He installed his himself 100% hardwire, and I was very impressed on how he did it. And uh, you know, he was actually able to give me some insight on some of it, which I thought was very cool. So you never know who's watching your videos, but just know that if you're gonna do it yourself and you're not real familiar with electrical systems, it is not something you should play around with and it can be very 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 dangerous um, you can start a fire you can hurt yourself end up in the hospital i mean you could kill yourself if you're being really scary with it so um, we do not endorse anybody changing them themselves this part themselves we highly highly recommend that you hire a qualified technician to do it and by qualified you know, you should definitely ask him questions and make sure he's qualified and not just some fly-by-night technician um, that's just going to throw the part in. Now, I've seen some technicians, you know, they get to rolling on working on RVs here and they've done so many of them, they don't feel like they need to read the instructions. So my father taught me that regardless of what you know, when you get a new product, this one's a 2005, this one's a 2018, it is always a great idea to go through the instructions again and make sure nothing has changed and there's no other special procedures you need to perform before installing the product. That goes with anything. So when you're saying I don't need to read the instructions, it's always a good idea to go ahead and read them. It's amazing what you can learn by reading the instructions. Sometimes you can be in there and you can find um, codes for when you're diagnosing it you know, all these little lights on here. Over temp, overload, AGM, low battery, gel two, charge gel one, invert, wet. Um, I mean, just to better understand, it. and even if you have somebody else install it, by all means, ask for the instruction packet, go through it and read it. You'll learn a lot about your inverter and you'll actually like what you learn. So anyways, I hope this video was helpful to somebody out there. Maybe you have a inverter charger that has had a small electrical fire like this and you, you're freaking out because you don't really know what the problem is or maybe you're freaking out of the price of the unit um click our link below we think you'll you'll find that the price you see is great 
Um, I'll post a link for the 2000 watt inverter charger that we have here on the bench. And, um, but just so you guys know, you can expect to pay anywhere from $899 all the way up to $1,600 for a unit like this, uh, depending on who you're buying it from. I think a fair price is anywhere around $1,000 to $1,100, I guess, depending on your market. But, um, you know, it retails for $1,400, just so you guys know. But anyways, guys, I really appreciate everybody that watches my videos. And I also really appreciate everybody that's been sharing them and helping me grow my uh, YouTube subscriber count. Um, we're looking at getting some better equipment for videos. Most of the time, I have to record them myself. And you know it can be difficult and challenging at times, you know, especially if I'm trying to show you how to do something. As for if you go back and look at some of my other videos, I usually will have somebody helping me videotape. But um, I really enjoy making the videos, so I want to thank everybody that subscribed and makes it possible for me to continue to make them for you. So until next time, safe travels out there, and I hope you guys are all having a better day. And know that you've seen this video. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.